Good to see you, uh, Anthony, because I've uh, been looking forward to talking to you more. And I was fascinated to see that you're involved in trading and you're also an NLP trainer. And it sounds like you've spent uh, quite a few years working on NLP training and trading also. So how did you get started in the trading part? Was that first before NLP? Well, my background is that I spent 20 years working in the financial services industry. Um, first of all, selling financial products and advising people on their finances. And then um, I went into management and then senior management within the financial services industry. Uh, so I ran a sales force of people who were advising uh, the public uh, on their finances. And as part of that role, um, I got on a board of uh, senior managers who were uh, essentially making decisions on funds within an insurance company. So um, asset management, moving funds from one um, asset class to another asset class in order to manage the customer's money. Um, and so I, I started to understand um, through that how uh, money was moved by big industry from one asset class to another and how that affected the, the price of the assets. So I became fascinated to do with um, with, with moving money. Um, and um, when I set up my, my own training business, I left the financial services industry and became a coach and a trainer um, specializing in NLP. Um, and when I set up my, my company, I, I thought, you know, what's a good way to use NLP? Um, and the good way that I uh, thought of to use NLP was to become an expert as a trader. So um, I used the techniques of NLP in order to become a, an expert trader and then start training other people in trading as well as in NLP. Excellent. Uh, before that happened, did you happen to notice other people in trading who were involved in NLP or just you were the only one? No, I didn't make any link at the time, if I'm, if I'm honest. I, I, I could understand how NLP would be useful in trading in, in lots of different ways. Uh, but I didn't notice any particular link and, and, until I started reading uh, lots of lots and lots of books on uh, trading. And um, in some of the books, uh, in the Market Wizard books, the author interviewed um, some people from the world of NLP who were also looking to coach others in the field of trading. So. Um, I then thought, well, I, hey, hang on a minute. I'm not the only one who's who's uh, recognised this link and the uh, and the um, simil, you know, the similarities between the two different um, two different subjects. And so, yeah, I, I was fascinated by that and by the links that were being made there. Um, so, yeah, but I think people still think, you know, NLP. You know, people think, what is it? I think that's the first thing they think, and then you know, okay, so I understand what it is now. Now, how can I actually apply it? And I think hopefully, that's what I help people to to do. Oh, excellent! So anyway, you you, you kind of have two complete different businesses going, and you know, one of them is yeah. in trading, and you have training courses in trading, and also in NLP, and um, it seems that. Uh, if for NLP, you could use it to help people with anything. So uh, trading is just one of the things that it helps with. And so I would imagine mm -hmm. if you, in the past, if you've had any clients or students and so forth, they probably use it for maybe some of them for trading, but also for other things in life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, NLP is and has been described as the art and science of excellence. Um, and one of the premises of NLP is that essentially if somebody else is really good at something and you want to be good at that thing, then the key is to find out what they're doing and do the same thing 
and use the techniques of NLP in order to be able to do that and you, you can do it for yourself and uh, of course becoming good at something is not just the actions that you take it's the thought processes that are involved behind the actions and that's what NLP helps you do it provides a series of techniques of tools that you can use uh, once applied to replicate excellence and become even better if you like than the person that you're replicating or that you're modeling excellent um, I noticed that uh, you also have some courses on how to trade and so the the path that you took uh, you mentioned has to do with some understanding of fundamentals and also uh, a price action and uh, you mentioned a recognition of of the footprint of the market and uh, mm. sounds similar to what uh, I do and the people in my community and uh, I was very interested to see you know how you go about spotting uh, a reason to get into a trade and a, a reason to get out mm. out of a trade well, when I uh, first started getting interested interested in trading, uh, I think the, the catalyst for me was I watched a television program, um, and the television program was a documentary basically um, on home based traders, um, and they showed um, a number of traders, but one particular guy that I remember, he uh, they were they were watching some some news event. And he was waiting for this news event. And once the news event, uh, the, the results of the news event had actually come out, he waited a little while and then took a trade. And the, the commentator said, you know, he spotted something that other people seem not to have spotted. And about five minutes later, he'd made a thousand pounds or twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. And I thought, God, that, that, that was quick. First of all, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't seem to do much. And he's ended up with all this money. I mean, what you know, I quite like the idea of that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, how, how fascinating. Uh, and it was that moment then when I thought, you know, that, that might be, for me, something that I'd enjoy doing myself. And also, it would be a way of applying the techniques that I'd learned from NLP to say, okay, you know, if he can do that, then I can do it. Let me find out how he's actually done that. And uh, so that was when I started reading books on trading, watching lots of videos on YouTube, etc., cetera, um, portals like that on trading and finding out what these guys, you know, what these expert traders actually did. And so I went through, well, I, I've read hundreds of books on trading now. And the, the thing that um, came to me was that, okay, that, you know, trading is challenging. It's, you know, people describe it as being difficult. It is, you know, um, obviously you're competing as a home-based trader against uh, big institutions with all the money in the world and lots of brain power and machinery behind them to create, to find the right opportunities. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's difficult. You need to become an expert in this particular field in order to be successful in it. But what do the experts, how do they read the market? How do they look for opportunities? Um, and then, how, you know, how do they go about taking trades once they've seen the opportunities? So it's a question of just, for me, it was a question of just breaking it down and saying, okay, what are the important things to look for? So you mentioned the footprint of the market. You know, what is the market? What's the big picture in the market? What's it telling me about what it's doing at the moment? And then, you know, based on that, what's it likely to do in the future? So I, I, I break trading down into five different areas. I think you've got the context, which is the bigger picture. This is your trend lines. This is your support and resistance levels. Uh, these are perhaps your, you know, the, the formation of uh, congestion areas within the markets and trends as well. So you've got the context and then you've got the content, which is going into smaller detail at that point in time and saying, okay, what are the chart patterns that are emerging within the congestion areas? What are the candlestick patterns that are emerging when a market looks as though it may start going up or a market may start going down. What are the candlestick patterns? What are the specifics within the picture? So you've got context and then you've got content. And then you've got 
confluence okay so what is you know what's happening in the smaller picture that is confirmed by other aspects so you've got your technical indicators your M macd indicators your stochastic your rsi indicators and they add confluence to what you're reading within the price action within the 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 content of the candlesticks or whatever measure you're using there um so you've got that and then essentially you you you've got your trades and so okay so um in order to be successful one of the keys to trading is to take minimal risk and look for a large reward you know people say you must um cut your losses and let your winners run okay so what that means is that basically your reward for every trade needs to be larger than your risk um and, and you know assuming that you've got a reasonable level of uh, probability as well so you've got context content confluence risk management and then the the final part for me is money money management so it's okay it's saying how much capital have i got available to trade and based on the capital that i've got available to trade what size of positions should i be taking in order to grow my account the way that i want to grow it and not take too much risk so they're the five areas and i think that what i actually did was i, I broke down those five areas and said okay so i needed to become an expert in each one of those particular areas and i read books based on the experts in those areas and that's how i did it um, I, I love simplicity. I love to make things simple. I look because I think by by making things simple, your brain understands it. You can find where the challenges are, what you don't know, what you do know, and you can work on creating a good outcome for yourself from that. Yeah, absolutely. I I have also experienced that trading is kind of a it works best for a person who has a little bit of a whole brain approach. Um, because uh, so many traders come from the purely left brain approach of just analytical and numbers and logic. Mm -hmm. And then there's a big part of it that is uh, right brained and has to do with the um, sort of the artistic side of the, the shape of the patterns. And if you can look at the market like, um, like an artist is looking at something that they're going to draw uh, I think there's a a big breakthrough that can happen because of that, and I've learned that uh, you can override some things that have to do with logic by understanding the basic shape and pattern that the market usually makes. Right before news, like you were saying, uh, the market will put itself into a position where it could be forming the end of a of a trend or the end of a correction. And if you know that that is the way that it's set up, news will come out and it'll go the other way and everybody will buy or sell in the other way. But um, when you see that uh, it's actually forming a spike and going to turn and you wait just a few seconds later, like you were saying this guy was doing, is that's probably what he was seeing also as it was forming. Uh, yeah, a recognized yeah, term. I think you're right, and uh, you know, I think the, the, there is there is an artistry to it, and also I think that you know, traders. If you think about artists, you know, artists love their work; they they're in harmony with their work, and um, I think you know, we can learn a lot from that as traders. You know, if if you're, you know, if you're relaxed, if you're in harmony with the market, if you're following the movements of the market, then you're going to make good decisions. If you're anxious you know, then you're not going to make good, good decisions. And so that's, you know, that's the link, I suppose, between trading and your, you know, and emotions, uh, which is a large part of what NLP can help you with in trading. Yeah, and one thing I was very impressed with is that your company has uh, a complete training program, uh, including NLP practitioner certification, um, which can be done, as I understand, totally online, and NLP master practitioner, and then you said you have NLP trainer available online. So I'm just uh, so impressed with the 
training program that you put together and I've never seen anything like it and I think that so many traders could benefit from studying this along with their in whatever they're studying with trading they need to study changing their mind and developing these skills in NLP yeah well we were one of the uh, if not the world's first organization to put the full NLP program online so as you say three stage progress uh, or process it becoming an NLP practitioner master practitioner and then trainer you know one of the premises of NLP is you know learn how to do something become an expert at it so that's your practitioner then your master practitioner and then once you've become an expert at it teach others um, and uh, that's the trainers side of, of NLP so we, we offer all three courses it's online it's tutored training and I really think that it, it can help traders we you know the as I say becoming good at something isn't just about learning how to do it it's also um, it's also learning how to control your thoughts how to understand yourself how you produce your actions through your thoughts and quite often there's a disconnect somewhere down the line between what people want and what they're actually doing um, if that makes sense to you Scott the you know people might might want to stop smoking but for some reason they're still smoking well what what's the reason for that they might want to excuse me they might want to lose weight and if they're wanting to lose weight but they're still eating a lot then you know what's the disconnect there between what they actually want and what they're actually doing and NLP provides techniques processes and thoughts thought patterns and strategies that enable you to understand your thinking to get it more aligned with what you actually want so that your behaviors then become aligned with your thinking and the disconnect has disappeared yeah, and that's so interesting that um, I have talked to so many people who are struggling to try to master the trading business, and many of them are working full-time at jobs, and I was just thinking, you know, why don't you just take some time and learn NLP, become a practitioner, and then a lot of, a lot of the problem is that people aren't realistic about the amount of time that it takes, so if you know this is going to take maybe two or three years for you to master trading um, and the first thing you do is learn NLP then during that time you could take clients and and help people with NLP as a as a practitioner while mm. having a schedule that works with your trading and why not I, I think a lot of people should do that yeah or or you know an NLP practitioner is, is essentially a, a coach um, so life coaching is the you know is essentially the outcome that you get from becoming an NLP practitioner and an NLP master practitioner. You're able to help people solve problems as well as helping yourself and giving yourself some personal development at the at the same time. Um, and it definitely is a two it's a two way thing. You know, you, you the more you understand yourself, the more you begin to understand other people and the relationship between your communication which is internal and the communication that you, um, you that you interact with if you like or the way that you interact with other people mm. yeah you know peace does have a lot to do with communication and also the internal communication um, and, and what, what Scott one of the reasons that I think trading is so difficult is that there are lots of different components within it there are so many things to be thinking about at any one time um, you know, you look at a you look at a chart, and uh, very often there are lines drawn here and waves drawn there, and then you've got indicators on it. And it, there are so many things to think about at any one time. And you know, NLP can under, can help you understand why that's confusing. And you know, the the brain has uh, it has a limited capacity for processing information at any one time. And we, we, we chunk things in our brain together and we, we have a maximum number of chunks that we can address at any, of information that we can address at any one time. Um, if, you, if you do some research on the magic number seven, 
then you'll find that the magic number seven, seven plus or minus two bits of information or chunks of information is the maximum that a brain can handle at any one time. So if, you, if you're looking at a, a price chart with lots of lines and drawings and waves, etc., on it, then there are many more than seven bits of information there. And so if you're looking at this and you're quite new to it, then you're just not going to be able to process it all in time to take the trades. And you're going to, that's what, when you make mistakes, that's when the brain gets, well, when you realize that you're confused because the brain's not able to process the information. And so what you need to do over a period of time is, you know, like you would remember a telephone number, you chunk the information down. So you might remember one, two, three, four, just as one thing rather than four separate digits, five, six, seven, eight, as one thing rather than four separate digits. Um, and the bre that's what the brain does. So it begins to understand different aspects how, and how they interrelate and therefore eventually when you become uh, consistently profitable it's be probably because your brain is able to deal with the information that's in front of it so that you can make logical conclusions draw logical conclusions and make logical decisions at the right time yeah i I've, I've noticed that there's just a lot of stress in in trading and um, a big part of it is we need to relax and we need to mm. get into a, a more relaxed state. I think NLP does uh, just deal with that also, but when your mind is stressed, then you're not able to really make decisions in, in a clear manner. And I think that we are constantly being bombarded with overwhelm, being just being overwhelmed with mm. too much information and multitasking. I, I heard, recently that that's a source of stress is multitasking and we're always multitasking just in my daily life you know I can see I'm doing this and this and this at the end of the day it just adds up like I need to take a break yeah yeah no absolutely well if you think about it stress doesn't there are there are two time uh, three time frames sorry three time frames that the mind operates on and can operate on it can operate in the past the present and the future um, when you're multitasking, what you what you're actually doing is you're trying to manage things in all and think in all three time frames at the same time. You you you're worried about things that have happened in the past. You're worried about things that might have might be happening in the future, and you've got to deal with the thing that you're doing at this point in time as well. And that the brain, you know, it suffers from overload on that on that basis. Um, and so you know the. It, you know, when you think about the main problems that pe that traders experience with their emotions, a lot of it's to do with fear, uh, and fear isn't to do with necessarily what's happening now. It's to do with what you worry might happen in the future. So that's forward thinking. That's future thinking. When you when you when before you enter a trade, you make a decision and you commit to a trade, and then you get in a trade, and all of a sudden. The mind starts thinking about what might, you know, if you if you uh, take a, a long trade, you, you think the market's going to go up, so you, you take your long trade and the market goes up a little bit and then starts going down and you, all of a sudden you, your mind projects into the future and it goes, okay, so what? Oh no, it's going down. And all of a sudden you exit the trade for a loss and the market turns around and goes exactly where you thought it was going to go. And that's your mind playing tricks on you. And it's, you know, it, it's important, I think, to understand how your mind works in order so that you can actually recognize the emotions for what they are and concentrate only on the present moment in time when you're in trades. That's an example of how it can help. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like practicing Kung Fu or some martial arts or something and you need to get yeah, right NLP, in the zone yeah, no, that's exactly right and you know and also you sit in you you have two losses on the trot let's say you have two losses on the trot and you're sitting there waiting for the next opportunity and so what are you thinking about a lot of what you're thinking about and the decisions that you'll eventually make are going to be influenced by things that have happened in the past by the two losses that you've actually had um, and it, you're more likely to make poor decisions based on that than if you're concentrating only on the present moment in time and what you can see in front of you on your charts. Yeah, 
and also just not being in a relaxed state. And uh, yeah. so often, if we just relax everything and also step back a time frame or two, <laughs> like sometimes we're just too focused in on the short time frame. You step back a little bit, go to a little bit longer time frame, relax. Yeah. Look at okay, everything's fine. I'll go do something else and come back and look at it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is that you know one of the other things that traders suffer from is you know they they call they call it FOMO, don't they? Fear of missing out, and you know mm. uh, that 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 you know that's to do with you know thoughts about scarcity, and it comes it's fear again, but it's to do with scarcity. You know, experienced traders know that they don't have to worry about what's happening in the market right now. They don't have to worry about missing out on opportunities, let's say, that they think, you know, okay, oh, the market's just shot down 20 points or whatever. Well, let's not worry about that because experienced traders know that there's another opportunity that's just around the corner. The markets are always producing opportunities. Um, and so, yeah, so understanding how scarcity relates to your feelings and how it affects your brain is important as well. Have you made any specific training for using uh, NLP for trading? Because I see that you know you have NLP training, you have uh, training on trading, but I was wondering, you know, you if you have any training that's specific for traders and how how to use it for how to use NLP for trading. Yeah, I've got I've got a a series of videos that I've started on how to master the emotional and psychological side of trading, which are I've begun to release to YouTube, so they're they're out there at the moment. Um, but ma mainly, I mean, the the NLP courses are cross contextual, so people use them for lots of different things. Um, people, I you know that I've got therapists who use NLP to help people overcome stress, anxiety, and depression. Um, I've got psychologists who use it for similar sorts of things. I've got sports coaches who use it to enable their clients to um, excel in their sports. Um, I've got bankers all over the world who, you know, to the head at heads of banking or organizations who use it in order to be able to understand their staff better. HR, people, um, educators, you know, people use it in lots of different fields and that's the beauty of the techniques is that you can use them in loads of different situations. You know, one of, one of the things in trading, again, that I think is important when you're reading the market is to be able to see things from different perspectives. So to be able to see, you know, from the, from a perspective of, of a bull trader what's happening in the market and what what will the bull traders be thinking at any one point in time about you know when to enter and exit trades and at the same time just stepping away from that you know what will the bears be thinking what opportunities will they be looking at um, and so weighing up the two things the two sides together can help you make decisions as a trader who can go um, long or can go short it can be a bull or can be a bear you can then start making decisions on the route if you like of highest probability once you can see things from different perspectives and NLP just as an example and it's only a very small part of NLP but it can help you it gives you techniques and exercises that you can do to be able to gain perspectives from three different positions from your own position from another person's position and also from a third party so that you can look at communications so that you can look at thought patterns based on those three perspectives and I think that that can be used you know it can be used for in relationships with your partner with your spouse it can with your children it can be used for relationships with um, colleagues at work and it can also be used by traders to help them understand bull and bear perspectives so a lot, all of this is cross-contextual, and that's the beauty of NLP. It can be applied in lots of different situations. I, I love it. And the, I, my experience is if you practice NLP, you're going to be more successful in anything that you choose to do. And these things like changing perceptual positions that you're describing, yeah. and yeah. Uh, many of us would, would have this first impression like, what is that? What does that have to do with anything? But yeah. those things are 
designed to be profound ways of changing inside yourself. And when you actually practice it, rather than just hear someone talk about it, it can really do something. You can um, step out of yourself and look back at yourself um, mm. figuratively and, and, and say, what are you doing? And, and just get a different perspective on yourself. Yeah. Watch yourself trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 absolutely. And you know, the the um, one of the one of the big things I think for traders or people who are looking to become traders is, you know, how, how is it how is it going to you know what sort of outcomes do I want? I mean, people look and at videos and they see these sports cars and big houses and oh yeah that'll be great but actually what's the reality for most traders you know some some traders will end up becoming multi-millionaires and most people you know what what's actually involved in order to get there is not necessarily what they want you know people form outcomes in their mind or th think you know i want this without really thinking through what are the knock-on effects on everything else and most traders um most people who, who enter the trading world and become full-time traders they don't necessarily spend most people don't spend all day trading they don't you know they they most people actually understand begin to understand that there's a balance between working and the rest of their life and there are lots of people um, make sufficient money and get a sufficient income from trading so that they you know they work to one two three four hours a day and the rest of the time they're spending with their families um, so you know it, it's creating visions for the future and understanding outcomes um, NLP is uh, provides a series of techniques that are outcome based so that you can almost project into the future project your thoughts into the future of what you want test it out and say okay you know how does that look for me do i really want that and how can i change it so that it becomes better for me and so uh, so yes so everything to do with nlp is based on the outcome that you want to achieve which is you know it's a form of goal setting isn't it yeah uh, one thing that I've, I've noticed is that um, people have uh, limiting beliefs and uh, like I've, I've known people who believe that you have to work hard to make money and then they will make that true about trading so that you know, yeah. they sit there and they'll trade and trade and trade and work all day long yeah. and they'll get yeah. up and put on a suit and go in their office and sit there and then uh, there are other people who gradually get this belief that money can flow to you in a effortless manner. It just could, could just flow to you. You just enter a trade and walk away and the money just yeah. keeps on coming. Uh, yeah. 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 That, 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 that's, that's so true. And I've been through all of those, you know, one of my, I, I'm a, I, I've always seen myself, you know, th this is a belief. I am a hard worker. That is my belief. And, you know, and um, when you, when you trade and you think I'm a hard worker, that means, you know, I used to think that means I have to take lots of trades. So I'd take 40 trades a day. And then, you know, the next day I'd look at what had happened and I'd sort of think, how much commission have I paid on all of those trades? <laughs> you know, what, what would have happened if I'd have just focused on taking my A trades rather than all of those trades, some of which were A trades, but other trades which were B trades, C trades, and D trades, you know, and, and if the C trades and the D trades lose your money, then what, you know, are you not better just taking one, two, three, four, five, maybe maximum trades a day and then calling it a day? And so, you know, um, fortunately with my work ethic, trading isn't the only thing. I do trade myself and I trade almost every day, but I'll only do it for a, 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 often a very short part of the day. And the rest of the time is either dedicated to my family or the rest of my business and NLP and coaching people and training people and tutoring people. Nice. Yeah, I, I love it. And one of the things uh, I notice is that people really need to uh, spend some time working on themselves and to discover what their limiting beliefs are because it's unconscious for the most part. And so we have to spend some time working on discovering what, what they are and then spend some time changing them and 
some NLP processes like anchoring can be used to uh, bring up feelings of success and joy from the past. And I think a lot of traders need to learn how to collapse an anchor because mm -hmm. uh, there are people who have, who have put in an anchor that every time they sit down at their charts and at their computer, they've, they've anchored in anguish and, mm. and suffering and pain and, and over and over and over until um, they can't do it anymore because every time they sit down, that anchor kicks in and the, the anxiety kicks in and they don't know how to get rid of it. So uh, I, I just see NLP as a, as a godsend to people in the trading business. If, if they're not practicing NLP, I think, Everybody needs to. I mean, I really think everybody needs to practice it, learn about it. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're, you're absolutely right there, Scott. And if you sat there at your computer and you're anxious and you're worried, then you're going to make poor decisions. And you, with poor decisions, you're more likely to lose money. So it definitely makes sense. And anchoring is uh, anchoring is essentially applying a physical stimulus that creates a change in your mind so that when in the past you may have become anxious in a certain situation, instead you become the way you want to be, maybe relaxed and happy. And the way that you do it essentially is you, so a physical anchor might be something like uh, on, on, you know, one on, say on your left hand, you hold your thumb and your forefinger together. Um, so you do that. Um, but at the same time, what you will do is you'll say, okay, so right, um, let me think about what's happening here. Um, when I sit down at my computer, when do I become anxious? I become anxious when I turn my monitor on. Um, and so, okay, so what would I rather have instead? Um, and people then will visualize themselves becoming anxious in front of their computer and, and, and they'll get anxious thinking about it very often. Um, so what would I rather have instead? I'd rather be relaxed and um, focused and you know just easy going so in order to do that what in order to create the anchor what you have to do is you have to associate the thoughts of becoming relaxed to a time when you 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 sit in front of you and you turn your monitor on um, so you think about a time in the past when you were relaxed when you were really relaxed and really happy and also focused at the same time and you so if you if you think of a time when you when you were that relaxed and as you think of that thing just apply your anchor so as you think about that thing touch your forefinger to your thumb and think about that time in the past when you were really relaxed and when you think about that time just go back to that time in your mind and notice what you were feeling, notice what you were seeing, notice what you were hearing at that point in time, and have those feelings now. Keep your forefinger and your thumb together as you create that anchor. And then just as you notice that state, if you like, that state of mind or that thought disappearing, release your anchor. So release your forefinger and your thumb. Uh, so you would do that several times and then in the future, when you're about to go in front of your monitor and turn the monitor on, when you would have in the past become anxious, you just apply your physical anchor, which is your thumb and your forefinger. You apply that and then it triggers the thoughts of relaxation and you become relaxed. It takes a bit of practice, but that's the theory behind it and that's the technique of anchoring. It's, it's amazing. Uh, I, I've seen you know, Anthony Robbins on stage. <laughs> he's mm. like, he's, he's a master of, you know, people, he's like yeah. s sitting there on stage and putting, putting his thumbs on different parts of his, yeah. he's anchoring himself all over the place. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah no. You got him. Uh, oh, I need a little bit more power. <clears throat> he's, oh, I need a little bit more <laughs> creativity. Yeah, they, this is, you know, this is a new technology, but it isn't, uh, they're not new techniques, you know, Pavlov, with his salivating dogs, uh, if you remember Pavlov, Ivan Pavlov, um, he 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 used the anchoring process back, you know, over a hundred years ago now, in order to, and he figured out that there, were, you know, when there was a, a f when there was a stimulus, very often there'd be a response, and the the internal response that you get to the stimulus is what the anchor is all about. Mm. 
And it, yeah, it can be a lot of different things like a smell mm. or, or the sound mm. of an old, old song or something like yeah. that can just take you right back to an experience you had 30 years ago. And yeah. you can walk by a place and sometimes I smell the certain kind of bread baking and all of a sudden, yeah. oh, I'm back at yeah. this place at this monastery where they used to bake yeah. this bread and all these memories come back just in an instant when before consciously I couldn't remember any of that stuff. Yeah. 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 No, definitely. I mean, the all loads of big companies use it in their marketing as well. You know, you think of Coca-Cola and their, they associate uh, their, their drink with Christmas time and holiday times and McDonald's and Burger King associate it with family time and being happy and relaxed. And, you know, they, they, they'll use these things to, people watch the adverts and they, they all of a sudden they, they you know it creates this desire where did that come from well it must have been what i watched it is but it's also the subtle way that the marketing tapped into the unconscious within you that stimulated that response and made it more than just a visual thing it becomes a feeling and as you say a smell and etc so yeah <laughs> It probably works because people will sit there and go, oh, that's stupid commercial. I don't like that. And they, it keeps repeating over and over. And then they're in the store like, oh, I think I want that. <laughs> they're putting it in their exactly. shopping cart. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. It does. They associate, you know, you think of the, you can visualize now the McDonald's sign and it will bring certain, you know, certain feelings towards you. If, 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 if they've done their job properly, whenever you see that sign, You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll have to contemplate whether you want to go in there or not. And, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's what they're all about, you know. Uh, some, some marketing, you know, some companies in the past, I think, well, I think it was Philips, they got an advert banned in the UK because they, um, they rang um, a, a, or they put a tone I think it was a pitchfork that they used. They tapped a pitch, pitchfork and it made a certain sound and they associated that with their advert um, and it got banned because the government or the bodies who, who oversee it, the watchdog, actually said, you know, no, that's, that's not acceptable because the sound is too common and it's creating too strong a trigger within people. Um, and hmm. so it's giving you an unfair advantage. So they banned the advert and that, so now, Especially with sounds, companies are not allowed to use specific sounds to associate with their products where the sound is common and regular outside of their product or outside of their brand. That's, I don't see how they could, uh, out, I mean, that seems yeah. like a, a good thing to do in advertising to yeah. use some kind of yeah. a sound. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with the tuning fork <laughs> or a well, certain sound or, or a jingle or well, something? They, yeah, they have to create unique sounds now that, uh, you know, or jingles, if you like, um, or tunes that are related to their own brand rather than one that is um, naturally found. I think mm. that's, the, that, that's the key behind it. But yeah, that's what, but that's how it's, it can be so powerful. And as you say, um, it's about understanding how your unconscious processes work because uh, you know uh, all behavior all learning is unconscious and also all change is unconscious uh, quite, quite often people will say to me you know you know how come nlp can help me change in an instant um and so you know you think well change does take take place it takes place almost instantaneously sometimes sometimes it can take a long time but there are you know certain situations where change can take especially with emotions can take take place uh, you know straight away um i remember in the past when i was a little kid i used to um i used to get worried when i was in the house on my own and my parents were out i used to get worried because the the radiators uh, used to crack and uh, well, not not physically cracked, but they used to make a cracking and a creaking noise, and the pipes in the house made a creaking noise, and they sounded like some, you know somebody was walking on the floorboards. So I, I would I used to get worried when I heard this cracking sound because it sounded like somebody was in the house, and I used to hide behind my door, thinking there's somebody on the other side of the door, and I'd be hiding behind the door, and I'd be anxious and worried, and you know in a real really bad emotional state until. I eventually got up the courage to look behind the door and realized there was nobody there. And mm. all of a sudden, and I mean all of a sudden, instantaneously, the worry had gone. Mm. 
Hmm. And that's how quickly you can change your emotions and how quickly you can change your feelings. Huh. Yeah, that sounds interesting because after a while, that's the sound of those radiators and stuff gets to be like a relaxing sound because you keep hearing yeah. it. And yeah. It just kind of lulls you to relaxation. But yeah, I guess well, you're there by yourself. So we've talked about some of the challenges that you've seen that can be helped in trading with NLP. And uh, is there anything else that you've seen kind of consistently that uh, has helped people? In terms of trading or? In, uh, trading or uh, using NLP in, in general. So, well... I mean, I, I have the, the students that I have on my courses, um, they, we, we certify them. So in order to certify them, we ask them to report on their experiences doing the exercises. So um, one, of the, one of the techniques that they'll experiment with and do exercises on is anchoring. Um, uh, others are to do with um, thought patterns or submodalities. Um, others are to do with working with memories on their timeline, so eliminating negative emotions on their timeline. And so people who experience negative emotions like anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, things like that, people who've had bad experiences in the past for, for example, traumas, etc., can eliminate those negative emotions and, and enable them to um, eliminate mental blocks, if you like, in all sorts of different areas of their life. And so every day I have students reporting to me on various different things that they've done to help people and themselves to overcome these, these mental blocks. Um, so, so yeah, definitely. And I mean, you, you know, you think of any, you know, any problem that a trader might have from, from, not first of all not understanding it so how do i go about understanding trading well i go about i go about it by giving myself a proper education i take a trading training course like one of yours or one, like one of ours um, and i educate myself so i become an expert in the five areas that i mentioned earlier of trading you know you the context the content the confluence the risk and the money management become an expert in each one of those areas and you've got the education that you need in order to be able to start trading profitably. Once you've got the education behind you, then it becomes a practical thing of actually executing a plan. And people think, well, executing a plan must be the easiest part of it. Um, however, trading is, is, is tricky and, it put, and your mind plays tricks on you and therefore your emotions then start getting involved. So you understand the theory, but then you know, you think people think, well, why can't I, I understand what my my plan is? Why can't I execute it? Why do I end up taking trades that are inappropriate, that where it, it isn't following my system, where you know I take knee-jerk reaction trades just out of nowhere and I end up losing money? You know, why can't I hang on to my winners? Why can't I get out of a trade when I? Uh, how I, the market hits my predetermined loss limit. Why can't I do that? Why Why have I got tunnel vision and I'm just trading, trading, trading without being able to see the bigger picture? And NLP can help you with each one of these particular aspects of your trading um, what, and so that you eliminate these challenges, you Im eliminate the areas, the mental blocks, you, you get the emotional state that you want so that you can start trading your plan and becoming consistently profitable. That's excellent. I've, uh, I've heard uh, and practiced some timeline therapy and uh, hmm. I didn't realize that uh, this timeline therapy was a part of your program because in some, in some schools it's not, but it's from what I understand, it's one of the most powerful tools you can use is to mm. go yeah, back well, in time like that. Definitely, yeah, yeah. The theory behind it is, is that your memories are stacked almost in your brain as a, 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 in a timeline. Um, you, may see, you may see timelines on things like Facebook and LinkedIn, etc. nowadays, which <laughs> help you understand that memories, if you like, are not their physical memories almost by pictures and words, but the, your memories are stacked in a line and the, the past 
the line goes from your past to your future and you can so the timeline therapy as you call it or timeline work as I call it um, enables you to be able to examine memories from the past to say okay you know well and take learnings from the memories so that you examine it and and understand that actually maybe you've reacted in a way or taken learnings from an event in the past that aren't actually you know necessarily the way that it, it, it occurred in reality um, so you take from a distance you're able to take positive learnings that enable you to let go of the problems from the past so that you can move freely into the future without the same mental blocks and that that can help that's you know that can help you with negative emotions it can also help you with limiting decisions um, in the trading circles limiting decisions might be things like I've made a decision that I'm not worthy of having of earning a certain amount of money that's a limiting decision and at some point in time in the past you'll have made that decision and you may not have been aware at the time that you were making that decision and the timeline work within NLP can help you go back to identify that time go back to that time take learnings so that you can change the decision so that it's gone yeah I think that there are probably a lot of people who um, hear about that idea and think that yeah I don't have anything like that but you got to accept that this is now pretty much proven and there's a field of science that has proven that this is how people work and the thing that you're describing is you know the the belief of unworthiness for one reason or another apparently is very common and i think almost everybody has some degree of belief that was put in them at some point probably when there were some little thing that somebody said when you were a little kid uh, your your parents kept disciplining you yeah. and say, "Bad boy, bad boy," and then I like I grow up to be like I'm bad, you know, and it, it yeah. comes up unconsciously, like, "Oh, I'm yeah. I'm bad. I don't deserve to to have all of this success." Yeah, no, I believe that we we all every single one of us have, uh, grow up with learning difficulties because, and a lot of it's to do with your parents, but it's also uh, not only that, it could be your teachers, the people who teach you and who, who you model yourself on. You know, in the past, we, we, you know, we begin to learn, as you say, you're not good enough. You're not good enough, and um, and you know, you're not worthy. When you, you, you know, and we're all, we are all because of our tutors, because of our, because of our teachers, we all grow up with these learning difficulties, and um, they may, may they may never become apparent. And most people, actually, who are successful, have overcome them by addressing the problems from the past in the in the present so they've over they've overcome their problems and and uh, lots of them also um actually just live through it and never overcome the problems that that are associated with the past so yeah so it, it, it's um you know lots of people start trading for the freedom um and the freedom that they're talking about is financial freedom but actually trading once you understand trading and once you understand it using NLP, you can only you can not only get financial freedom, but you can become mentally free and emotionally free as well. And that is, you know, if 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 not the money that's involved, it's certainly liberating. Absolutely. I think that the the path to success in trading almost has to be a path of personal growth and uh the thing that we're searching for, maybe freedom, financial freedom, or things uh, that we want to achieve. But in order to to achieve these things, we have to enter a new kind of state, and that state is a more enlightened, free state where we've released all of our negative emotions that were bugging us before, and some things that we weren't even aware of and that's what we're really searching for is this is a personal growth path yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah and uh, and yeah and, and NLP can can you know it, it has tools and techniques that enable you to get in the right mindset at the right time and I think you know if trading 
it has two things that are important. It's judgment and timing. And your judgment and your timing needs to be spot on just when you need it. And I think that that's how it can help you. Well, I really appreciate you having the time to get on here, even if you're driving down the road or parked in your car. <laughs> but Thank uh, you, Scott. we'll uh, have you on here again sometime because uh, I'm going to be uh, recommending everybody to start using NLP, start learning NLP, start practicing these techniques. And uh, this really is the way that people need to go in order to get success. Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, we, I'd like to offer, make an offer to your students as well that uh, if they sign up to any of our NLP training courses, that I'll also include a training course on mind management and mindfulness that I think can be particularly helpful with uh, trading, which complements the NLP training courses. So I'll, I, I'll give them complimentary access to the mind management and mindfulness training course as well as any NLP training course that they sign up to. So hopefully that gives people a good incentive to go ahead. That sounds awesome. Uh, I, I'm very interested in your mindfulness training too because uh, – that sounds exactly like the kind of thing that traders need is to have that kind of mindfulness that uh, you can you can get through um, processes like what you're teaching there. And the NLP training courses do do cover uh, the timeline work, and they also give you an introduction to hypnosis as well. So you know, if you want to send somebody to sleep while you're talking to them. <laughs> and get them to do strange things, then you can do it by hypnosis. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, uh, a lot of people don't understand what hypnosis is, but uh, for me, can be I, useful. I had uh, an introduction to hypnosis a long time ago, and I discovered this is the most awesome mm. uh, personal development tool. And then NLP really is using the same type of thing, except uh, it actually does it more... Uh, in a organized way than just going into a trance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hypnosis is about how you use language and the language of the mind in order to create a relaxed state where you can make contact with unconscious resources. Uh, and that's essentially what, you know, what NLP does is it gives a framework to hypnosis so that you can um, get things the way that you want them. I think, uh, doing self-hypnosis is an important tool mm. also in that I've taken like about 20 different courses on how to do self-hypnosis and I record hypnosis recordings all the time and I listen to them when I'm relaxing and I'm constantly thinking what what do I need to put into my mind today to overcome mm -hmm. my current challenges and uh, yeah that's that's a very valuable tool. Yeah, you've got a good voice for hypnosis, Scott. Yeah, I put people right to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no. We have our webinars. Well, I didn't mean it like that, but yes. It's like we're trying to <laughs> stay excited and think about trading, and people are getting very relaxed. You know, I, th I do have kind of a relaxed way of talking. Yeah. Maybe if I keep studying NLP, I'll start talking with more excitement and passion also. 